Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to 16 Minutes, a weekly show here at CNT, where we'll cover a range of topics, including politics, lifestyle, pop culture, business, health, and science. I am your host, Nigel Worcestershire, and tonight, we'll head over to Ori's Deli for a chat with local political figure and entrepreneur, Jordan Malone, but who discusses his attempt at securing a state rep position and what his future in politics and business looks like. This is 16 Minutes. Ladies and gentlemen, we are here this evening at R.E.C., beautiful, fantastic restaurant here, and I'm joined across the counter this evening by Jordan Malone. And how are we doing this evening, Mr. Malone? Mr. Nigel, good to see you again. I'm actually doing great today. Absolutely fantastic, mate. It's it, it's a gorgeous day. It's a beautiful restaurant you've got here, all right? I mean, you're, are you part owner of R.E.C. now? So, Miguel McIntyre is actually the owner. Um... We didn't want to go through all the hassle in regards to with me being politics and such. So Miguel is the head owner. I'm basically like one of the head managers here, but we <laughs> we have a running joke around here, Nigel, saying that the, I'm the co today. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, goodness gracious. A little bit of a whipping boy at the Ares, are we? Yeah, you know, it's <laughs> just how it is around here. Miguel's one of my best friends, so we've... um. We've come here a long way. I started here back in, oh God, I started working here September, I think it was 7th or 8th, and I just became like one of the head people here with Miguel back in, shoot, oh, about like a month or two? Yeah, about a month and a half ago, yeah. Oh, fantastic, mate. Well, it's obvious that you're, that you're not scared of hard work, that's for sure, right? Calling your way up here and working your way up in the management, all right? In a food service industry, one of the hardest jobs to work in. A lot of people don't give the food industry folks the respect they deserve, all right? So, so you know, definitely hats off. It's a very hard industry. I do appreciate that, Nigel. I really do. Actually, along with that, I'm not sure if you knew this, but Ari's Deli is actually the longest still running restaurant in Los Santos started by Ari Andel herself. Oi, yo, is it really? Absolutely yes, it fantastic. A great little bit of trivia for the folks at home, the longest running restaurant here, and I hope it's many more years to come under the new management as well, all right? I hope so too. Rest in peace, Ari Andel, gone but not forgotten, but we're still keeping it running. The show always gotta keep going, you know? Sure thing, and I'm, I'm, I'm sure there'll be plenty of folks at home sending some prayers out for her as well. Absolutely. Well, we jumped forward a little, little bit for the people at home. Why, why don't you take us back a little bit now, Mr. Malone? Take us a little bit through your journey, mate. H how did we get here today in Ori's Daddy having a 16-minute in interview? All right? Take us through some of the journey. Tell the folks at home a little bit your story. You know what? First off, Nigel, that's an excellent question. Um, number two, I do want to say this. So I was born outside of Lincoln, Nebraska. Um, I have three brothers, Henry, Joseph, and Michael. Joseph is the oldest brother, Henry is the um, second below me, and then Michael is the baby one. Joseph is a mixed martial arts fighter, Henry is a fireman, and then my youngest brother, Michael, owns actually a small bakery. They actually make uh, different bagels, donuts, you name it. Um, all my family still lives back at home. My mother was a nurse, and my father was actually a town sheriff where I came from. Unfortunately, my mother did pass away about, oh goodness, about like a month or two ago, and rest in peace, her soul. Sorry to hear that, mate. No, it's okay. And no worries. I do appreciate that. But, you know, baseball was, uh, I actually was a big sports kid. Um, I struggled in school for a little bit growing up. Um, and because of that, it kind of motivated me just to go further into sports. I was, you can say I was a gifted child. I was basically always scouted. Um, I was really good at baseball and basketball in middle school and in high school. Up until that point, I actually was received a scholarship to University of Los Santos, getting a full ride for baseball. Now, basketball, I was good at too. I was the leading point guard. We won two state championships, and I won three straight three state championships. Excuse me, with goodness baseball. gracious. Yeah, it, we were <laughs> funny enough. My oldest brother Joseph and I, we ran the school. We, <laughs> he was the small forward i was the point guard and we just we kicked ass together Super a bit cool. of the jock types right but prom kings right that's how we speak <laughs> yes you got it along Absolutely. with baseball as well it was just something that i was always into and when i got to university of los santos i was given a full ride scholarship which i actually finished my master's degree in marketing and finance um along fantastic the fantastic fields to study i would say especially in this day and age Yes, I do agree. It came out actually pretty handy, but at the time I didn't know what I wanted to do. So instead I went pro baseball. 
I played for the Los Santos Panthers, and to this day, I actually still hold the world record, well, Los Santos record, excuse me, for most home runs in a season. I had 75 home runs in one season, and you know what? I'm going to name off my stats to you. Four-time All-Star, two-time <clears throat> Championship, and Rookie of the Year. Absolutely fantastic. Quite a bit decorated there, mate. All right. So, so I mean, I, I don't mean to fast forward the story here, but but what brings us to Ari's Deli, mate? We're not having a bit of a chat on the baseball field right now. No, absolutely. And that's the point I was getting to. Um, after my baseball career, I kind of just like did my own thing. And, you know, I took a break from Los Santos. I went back home to spend time with my family. And, you know, I, it was time to come back. Just a little bit rundown. I did lose my best friend back in, oh, goodness. It was like 2014, 2015. And rest in peace, Robert Ishmael. He long live him forever. My childhood best friend. I um, I kind of went back home just to spend time with my family. And, you know, it was time to come back to Los Santos. After my baseball career, I I didn't know what to do. I really didn't. But well, before we get too far ahead, mate, what, what ended the career? Was it a bit of an injury? Was it was a bit of a, you know, they didn't sign your contract back. It sounds like you were a bit decorated. Did you walk away from the whole thing? No, it was actually, it was a whole thing that went down, unfortunately. When I played pro baseball, so I had a, <clears throat> excuse me, my agent, Gregory, I forgot his last name at the time, excuse me, pardon me, Gregory Johnson, I believe his last name was. He was my agent. He actually forged all of my checks, <laughs> unfortunately. Um, when I did a bunch of modeling stuff and just different advertisements and endorsements, all that stuff was actually forged, Nigel. My oh, agents, yeah. Yep, he signed all of my checks. At the time, I was $10 million in debt because I was, supposed to, get, gracious. I was supposed to get a $20 million check from the endorsements and pay off my house and just have money to spare in case I wanted to retire. And guess what happened? I owed, I basically had to pay off that. I had cars I had to pay off because, you know, when you were a baseball star like me, Nigel, you wanted to live in luxury. It's fast and loose with the finances, right, mate? Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you want, at the time, I was just a dumb kid. I, I wanted to have all the nice cars, a really fancy house. But what ended up happening was I owed money. And my the banking company straight up said, hey, you got to pay off this stuff pretty soon. Or else you're going to be in debt and we're going to foreclose the house. So I knew a guy that basically knew the mafia. And at the time... You know, me being like an idiot back then, I didn't know what the hell I was getting to, Nigel. I, I thought that, hey, maybe I could trust these guys. But at the end of the day, they're still the mafia. So I borrowed some money off them. And at the end of the day, I basically did a huge bet on myself. Well, not a bet on myself, but just give me part of me. God, it's the radio these days. Um, I borrowed the money. And they said, "Hey, you got you're gonna be paying this amount of money if you don't get if you don't get it back." So it was the world. Borrow the money from the mafia, mate. Yeah, I had to borrow my money from the mafia. That was my only oh, chance. Yeah, yeah. I mean, granted, Nigel, I was a dumb kid back then. I was. I mean, I made sure dumb, thing. I made a dumb decision, and I still regret it to this day because it hurt my baseball career. Um, in the end, what happened was I placed a bet on myself in Game Seven, the World Championship. The last thing was going to be an error, and it was a $5 million bet, $25 million payout. What ended up happening? I, the ball got hit. I, I played first baseman, by the way. The ball got hit to me, right. and I screwed, I screwed up the play. I, I, I was supposed to throw it home. I threw it to third base, and they scored. And, they, excuse me, the Penguins won the world championship. What ended up happening? You know, I was supposed to get my contract renewed. I got all the money from that sports bet that I did. Next thing you know, the FIB raided my home, and they said, because I worked with the Mafia, I was under arrest. It was a whole, I went through a whole trial. Um, I went, actually went to the penitentiary for over, I think it was, goodness, six months, and I had to sign a one-year contract saying I cannot sign with any baseball team for one year. That contract actually just got up about, oh, I don't know, not too long ago. But the point of the matter was, it was a dumb mistake, and I told even my mother and my father that I would never commit something like that ever again. And what did I learn? I learned that because of that, it basically helped me become who I was. You know why I say that, Nigel, is because during that time, I only had a bachelor's degree. After all that stuff went down, I got my finance master's and my marketing master's because then that's how I learned how to work with my budgeting and just everything all together. Right. After all that went down, um, I served my time in prison. I, I let go, spent time with my family. And I came here to Los Santos. 
And that's how I met Ari Andel and Morgan Byrne. I actually met Ari my, whew, I think it was like my third day in Los Santos, and I didn't really know her too well. Um, funny enough, her first thing she said to me was, shut the fuck up, Jordan. And it was, Boy, yeah. it was a little joke that we had running. And I got to really know Morgan, and Morgan said, you want to have a job here? And that's why I kind of picked this spot, Nigel, because this is where it all first started about who I am to this day. Yeah, I mean, I was a pro baseball player, but Ari's Deli helped me become who I am to this day. Ari is the reason why I inspired to get into politics. When I, She was the first person I ever spoke to about, hey, I'm thinking about running for state rep one day. And it was right before she passed away, rest in peace, sir. She said, Jordan, if you ever get into politics, you know that you can put your mind through it. And that's what I did. I'm striving for my goal, and I do want state rep next term. Getting sixth place was rough, and even you know this, Nigel. Being the person at the Absolutely. Debate, I, I struggle with my knowledge, and I still am struggling. But that's why I'm taking initiative by taking law classes. I'm also studying previous cases along with going to court trials just to even know what it's like with the knowledge. I want to prep myself to make sure I do get state rep next term. So th that's why I did pick Ari's Deli. Ari's Deli is the original place where I started here in Los Santos once I came back from prison. It doesn't seem like you're any stranger of hard work, mate, all right? And, and, and clawing your way back up from the ditches, okay? So a failed state representative run behind you, but as long as you can learn something and grow from it, which I'm sure you did here in that state representative term, you're going to take that with you. So are you confirming here tonight on 16 minutes, you're going to be running again? The yes, state I... representative in the next election. Yes, I will be, Nigel. And I will be, I will be part of the Progress Party with Bex Lawson for the next term. That's what, for the next election. Now introducing Reality Checks. Get your daily dose of reality every morning and wake up with CNT Reality Checks. Get your reality in check today. www.cnt-sa.com Well, we, we, we've talked a bit about race, Daly. We've talked a bit about politics, mate. Take us through some of Malone Modeling Agency, all right, and how that came about and, and, and so, what you've got going on over there. Funny enough, Nigel, that's actually an excellent question. I, I told you before, when I played pro baseball, I was I was heavily into endorsements. When I did endorsements for different companies and different modeling agencies, I actually it inspired me. It was one of those things that I said, you know what? If my pro baseball career does not work out, I would love to own a modeling agency. It's something that's just... It's a good fashion industry. It helps out the community. And it's something that it gets people going, you know? Like, hey, I could go be a model for like a tattoo photo shoot. Or like, hey, I can wear like a nice suit like what you're wearing today, Nigel, and get part of a photo shoot, some headshots or something. So, you know. Thank you, mate. <laughs> no problem. Absolutely. I basically, I inspired myself. And when I came back to Los Santos after basically that whole ordeal and then working here at Ari's Deli, I told all my friends at the time, I said, you know, I'm going to own a modeling agency. I'm going to prove to people that anybody can basically do what they want. And I put the hard work into it. I got my business license. I mean, I don't have a location. I'm fr It's freelance type work, but we create catalogs, calendars, promote businesses. And, you know, it's just, it's something I enjoy doing. Granted, I mean, it might not be the biggest money profit, but, you know, I enjoy what I do. I love photography, Nigel. It's just... It's a passion of mine that's been a passion for me, even since days of college, which is photography classes. And, you know, at the end of the day, some people are going to be like, you know, profits, profit, this and that. But I'm always in the green. I mean, I'm not like far, far, far beyond, beyond in the green, but I still make my money back that I need to in order to help pay the bills. And that's all that matters. Yeah, I mean, I wish I could make more profit, but I'm doing things to make adjustments to help make more profits down the line by i hired right. a new manager i have another assistant and you know i'm just i'm putting the work out there we recently just finally got our company logo i opened up malone sure thing. agency back in october it was and it's it's been a blast ever since and i enjoy every single bit of it sure thing as i stated earlier no stranger to hard work over here or right building this thing up mate it sounds like you're doing a great job of keeping your overhead low right without having you know the brick and mortar facility doesn't necessarily seem needed because you're going to be filming on site and things anyway and with nowadays with, with, you know with the face time and everybody having the tellies and things like that it, it just seems more efficient in 2022 does it not it does you, you know i i do agree with you nigel it's i feel like companies nowadays here's the thing 
here's my advice to people that want to start up a business. Don't be afraid about being in the red because companies are going to tell you everywhere, Nigel, that, hey, my company was in the red for this amount or, hey, I might have been in the green this amount. Don't be afraid to go above and beyond. I tell everybody that. If you have a dream, go for it. If you want to reach that goal, do it. Tuning in tonight, ladies and gentlemen, taking away all of the knowledge of his run at state representative and currently serving as secretary to state representative Bex Lawson. The political future of Jordan Malone seems bright, and all of us here at CNT in 16 minutes will have a front row seat to that adventure. As always, ladies and gentlemen, have a great night and be safe, San Andreas. For CNT, I have been your host, Nigel Worcestershire, and this has been 16 Minutes. I was working behind the counter, and some asshole handed me some counterfeit bills. I called the police, and they arrested me. I hate the Republic Defender. I was just in a friendly competition, and I had to go postal truck. <laughs> You're under arrest. I should ask for a call. A great man once said that just because you did it doesn't mean you're guilty. We believe that until proven guilty, any man, woman, and child in this great country is innocent. Don't just surrender. Ask for a public defender. If they don't mind me asking, you don't have to give me the questions per se. But you're gonna yeah, yeah, my life. Right, it's going to be based off of what you give me, mate. Really, that's kind of what I was explaining before. Is you know, I'm going to ask you a little bit about yourself, right? And what you give me in that statement is going to give me kind of things to to decide what, what avenues we want to go down, right? So it's not like I have a list of things penned out here that I, that, okay. that I know I'm going to be asking you, right? There's a couple of loose things I've got here that I know I want to cover, which was your state representative run and, and what the future's going to hold and things like that. And if you're going to run again, but, but to be honest with you, I, I, I figured that would probably be towards, you know, later of the interview because I'm going to ask you, you know, a little bit about Jordan Malone and what's your journey like and, and what have you been through? And, you know, and then you, as you unpack some of that, I'm going to, I'm going to climb on to things like, I imagine you talk about, you know, possibly your baseball career or things like that. So I'll probably ask you a little bit more open-ended questions about that. So we can talk baseball for a little bit or things like that. And then we'll spin back around to, you know, Malone Modeling Agency and Blood Night Bouts and, and your political run. And you see what I mean? It's just going to be two yeah, blokes yeah, having yeah. a chat, right? Okay. You know, I feel, I feel nothing like to be scared of, mate. You, you've got all the answers, all right? I don't need gotcha stuff, okay? If you want to be prepared, I'm going to ask you about the question you flubbed at the debate. All right. How would you provide insight to the executive branch, Mr. Malone? I'm going to give you a shot of redemption here. Okay. Oh, my so, God. So you might, you might want to think about that one. You want to take five before, before we start. Oh, my God. So, oh, you're perfect. Behind <laughs> the scenes, mate. Right. So I'm going to give you a shot of redemption, mate. Okay. Oh. You looked a little balmy out there, all right? So I'm going to let the people know maybe you was just a bit shaken up, all right? And he absolutely has a plan now, San Andreas, of how we, he would provide insight to the executive branch as your state representative. Right, Mr. Malone? Oh. Yeah, you're a bit shooken up now, right? See, I, I should have told him, Mr. Ramsey, that would have been a perfect gotcha question for the first time oh, ever on man. 60 that Minutes. Would've... I would have put him right there in a the hot seat, mate. <laughs> We'd have watched him start sweating. Right. Oh, man. I mean, Nigel, you, you saw me fall at the debates, man. I, that Absolutely. Question, that question screwed me over. <laughs> a lot of people said that uh, debate, dude. Not the first one, but the second one. That's how I lost a lot of